After four bloody years, the Union defeated the Confederacy to win the Civil War and abolish slavery in April 1865. There were nearly four million slaves in the U.S. at that time. Union armies began marching through the southern states, freeing thousands of slaves each day. The news took months to reach Texas, the westernmost state in the Confederacy. On June 19, 1865, Major General Gordon Granger and 2,000 Union troops rode into Galveston, Texas and told slaves of their freedom. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. Granger's words spread through Texas. All at once, slaves found out the war was over and they were free. Their joyous, spontaneous celebration gave birth to Juneteenth. Juneteenth, a combination of the words June and 19th, commemorates when the last enslaved people in the South were finally set free. Many slaves were met with violence, even death, when they tried to leave. Yet the promise of freedom extinguished fear and fueled generations of indestructible people. Former slaves gathered on Juneteenth the next year and the year after that. And over the decades, black communities observed the holiday with festive family gatherings, colorful parades, and bountiful barbecues. Juneteenth is a celebration of independence, the day all Americans were truly free. Focusing on Juneteenth. Like, let's come together as a country and recognize that this was an important day, not just for the descendants of enslaved people in the United States, but for all of us who are Americans who think that the Declaration of Independence meant something and has to mean something in the future. More broadly, Juneteenth is about not just embracing the history of black Americans, but embracing the history of, of non-white folks in general in this country and saying, hey, we have to band together and really honor and acknowledge that we do have this shared history of facing discrimination, facing uh, some form of, of racism, uh, harassment, and you know, some, form, some form of othering, some form of feeling as though we are inferior or less than simply because of the color of our skin. If we can recognize our oneness, and as Glisson says, give consent to the fact that we are the same people, that I am you and you're different from me, that makes us still part of a unity that we all share, then I think the Juneteenth celebration will, will, will take off for everybody and not just be the black thing that we identify with, but the human thing that we all have to strive for. Our recognition of this holiday nationally comes after global protests after the murder of George Floyd, of Breonna Taylor, of so many others. That's just to mention the year 2020. And so there's, there's an almost disconnect between a celebration of something from 150 years ago, which actually didn't quite materialize. All the, the dreams of freedom didn't quite happen the way we had hoped. But then also, one is left struggling to understand how Juneteenth speaks to the current moment. That one wonders, will it take another how many decades before we can celebrate freedom from structural racism, from police brutality and murder, from crippling debt that, you know, really preys upon the poor of all colors, but particularly black communities. One wonders in one's darker moments, you know, maybe it'll be on June 20th when we have to make, maybe we'll forget this for one day, but one wonders how long will it be that that freedom actually is truly realized. Happy Juneteenth.